welcome once again fans of flip clocks today i'm going to show you a full restoration um give you an idea of what it's like uh you get a clock off of ebay you're not really sure what exactly you have and uh and then you kind of give it a check over here so i'm going to show you how what i do when i get a clock like this and so you, i'm kind of looking at it i'm seeing uh the yellowing of the knobs uh the dirt i don't i'm not afraid of dirt i'll tell you but i'd rather have dirt than where someone screwed with it and when i saw that on ebay i thought that was a cigarette burn i wasn't sure wipe it right off there not a cigarette burn so that's good i'm looking for cracks chips uh, there's scratches from use it was used you can tell it's flipping just fine it seems so we get right into disassembly, and if you've seen any of my videos, you've probably seen this a hundred times. You just pull the knob straight off here, and uh, you can see it. They're uh, they're whiter colored on the bottom than the top. Still don't know what causes them the yellow. Possibly uh, exposure to sun, heat. I'm not sure. Um, and that's sometimes I use the uh, you can see the yellowing difference there. I use a blade to to try to gently get that up. That gets stuck sometimes, and all of these have a tendency to stick and um, but these aren't today so again knobs are in good shape and this one here seems usually well, okay usually that's a problem but uh, today not so much so I've unscrewed all the screws there's five cabinet screws two uh, clock mechanism screws I just kind of shake them out there there's the cabinet screws they're all there's five of them around the side there and they're all longish like that. And when I start to lift up here, usually a couple more will fall out. Okay, and just lift straight up. And then you turn it like a like a you're opening the page of a book because you don't want to mess up your speaker there. So what I like to do is go ahead and get the circuit board off. And there's just two screws on this model. The good thing about this model is all the screws are very um, unique. Now here, uh, before I go too far, I want to turn this all the way over to the left. That's counterclockwise. I'm going to show you when you reassemble how you want to make sure you get things right. Now see this knob here? That's the tuner. It's turned all the way counterclockwise too. So when you reassemble, just turn everything counterclockwise and you'll be in good shape. You now the clock mechanism, just kind of walk it right out. And uh, I see that brown tape there. That lets me know that this light's never been messed with. That was put on there by manufacturer. It's not really even necessary, but that's a sure sign that no one's uh, ever messed with it. Now, this little washer type thing, it's a felt washer. It's like a dust guard. Um, that was very easy to, you'll get those lost easy, so kind of hang on to that. Now, um, the front piece I was just going to show you there, it just lifts straight off. There's no screws holding it in. You can see how dirty that is. But I'm going to show you how to get the faceplate off. It makes it a lot easier to clean this thing. So uh, there's tabs here. Uh, there's a post there in the center. It doesn't do anything. A tab there. So on all four corners here, you see the tab. And what you're going to do is you're going to squeeze those towards the center. You're going to squeeze them in. Now with my left hand, I'm going to be kind of prying out at the same time. Gentle pressure. Push in. Gentle pressure with my left hand. And I go around. Uh, sort of like... If you're tightening or untightening lug nuts, you just kind of go. You want to do this uh, gradually like that. And then you you won't break your tabs. Uh, uh, this this is a, it's dirty and it's got a few scratches, but you can tell no one's messed with this. Uh, sometimes a um, improperly restored clock will have broken tabs there because someone got in a hurry. It's very common, actually, and they either super glue them or glue them. Okay, there's your transformer. That's got to come off. It's just a matter of taking two screws out, and um, they're that uh, they just secured that in with a knot. And those two uh, uh, right there, where those lines go in, usually that's broke. And it's another sign that this clock's not been messed with. Those are real fragile. You don't need them, but uh, they're still intact, which is pretty surprising. Now, on some clocks, you know, thankfully not this one. Some clocks it's glued in with a horrid black glue. And you have to try to force that out, pry it out. You gotta be careful with that. So again, we need to take the speaker off, transformer off to get to the cabinet so we can clean it. Well, we've taken all the parts off here, and that's the clock. That's the radio, that's the speaker, uh, the mechanism, that's the well, and about the speaker, 
Yeah, another sign that this is that's that's forty years of garbage there. And you just kind of brush it off. I use um well if I don't use my finger, I use a q tip. You don't want to get real aggressive. A, a light a soft toothbrush or or some other kind of brush. Um now this uh in this situation the supposedly the radio's not working. Uh I'll show you here in a little bit. There's that thing there that turns the radio on and off. Uh, there's your control. I'll show you later how that is usually the cause. It's either going to be that or the volume control or the AM FM selector that's stopping this radio from working. And, and I'll show you how to clean that um, later in the video. So here's our bottom half of the cabinet. You can see how dirty it is. But right there, that, that's black paint to stop the white light from shining through the bottom. Everything looks great. Everything's intact. Here's our top part. You get a little felt piece piece there. That that'll uh, contact the clock mechanism. I guess keeps it steady. Or it, it's not really necessary, but I like to put it back the way it was. Filthy here. That's nothing that a soap and water and a toothbrush won't take out. Well, here's the knobs uh, after I've cleaned them again with soap and water. But you can see the yellowing that's persisting, and um, especially in those those uh, there's some differences, and I think. It, there's that one's yellowed, but uh, what you want to get is uh, some of this cream developer. It's it's hydrogen peroxide, salon care, the highest number you can get. Uh, usually that's 40, uh, 50. You need to have a license, uh, a beautician's license, believe it or not, to get this stuff. And it actually works a lot better than the 40 and 30, but they both they all work. And so you just cover your knobs, and I like to put it in a baggie. Now there's a theories going around how this works. Some people say you have to have the UV light. You do not. I actually put these under a LED light, and you'll see later how white they got. And I've actually done it before without lights at all, just ambient light. You look here at your mechanism. We'll see um, this light. I want to get out so I can replace the light. You can try to replace it without taking it out, but I think it's just risking it. Now, these are often broke, very often broke when you get a restore clock. So what I'm doing is I'm putting some pressure with my uh, ring finger there and pushing these tabs in here. Those are the two tabs that have to come out. Okay, pops right out. No damage done. When you're doing this the first time, you just got to take your time and, and be careful. Uh, this is just going to show you how that uh, wire is strung. It doesn't really matter as long as you put things back together and... Uh, don't don't get things in the way of other things. So instead of messing or horsing around here, I'm just going to go ahead and cut this off. It's going to make it easier for when I solder in the new light anyway. So here's our little holder, and it's blue so that the the yellowish incandescent light turns white when it filters through that. Believe it or not, that's why it's blue. Uh, that's before LEDs, before the bright white LEDs. Now uh, I'm going to take my time and get that out uh, so I don't break it, but. Here's the uh, actual lamps that I use. I believe this is the, uh, the exact replacement. You can get those at hobby shops. You can get them on eBay. Just search by the name and number. You see, that doesn't look exactly the same as what we're replacing. So what you need is to put on a um, you know, shrink wrap. That's all that is, is shrink wrap tubing. And uh, it does help it fit better. Uh, it makes it look like it's the exact same thing in case anyone ever takes it apart gets real fanatical about it like me maybe i want it to look about the same so anyway you get your shrink tubing and use the blue part of the flame there don't use the yellow it the yellow will smoke it right up and maybe even blacken it uh, so use the blue part of your flame and down you go so we go ahead and uh put it back in here now again i'm going to take my time to get this back in here so i'll go off camera um i want to take my time because this so far i haven't had anything break on this clock and we don't want to start with that. Okay, so we're going to turn our attention. Oh, yeah, I did it. No breakage. Okay, now we're going to, there's our uh, leads that's going to have to be desoldered and the new leads soldered into place. So you can see where you can pretty much see where it comes in right there and right there on the corner. So we're going to take a soldering iron and I've got it pretty hot, uh, not too hot. Uh, whatever 375 400 degrees it doesn't really matter you don't have to know the degrees if it melts it it melts it um you should you shouldn't have to hold it on there too long to melt it you want to try not to contact anything else boom 
just like that. So what I'm doing on the back side there with that uh, lead, I want it long enough to where my fingers are actually providing some, I'm pulling actually slightly, providing a little pressure so that it uh, comes out nice and clean. Now, I'm not going to worry about trying to make a hole in there. I'm going to go ahead and put the leads from the back side. And again, with my hand, I'll be, I'll be putting a little pressure, exerting a little pressure, just a little. Make sure I stick them in the right hole. That's very important, by the way. So anyway, you, you put a little pressure there. And that's why taking these movies sometimes helps you so you can see, you know, where did I get that out of? So anyway, you give it a little heat, and then it comes. Now, sometimes there's enough solder to where I don't even have to do anything else at this point. It, uh, the solder closed up, will close up on that wire. In this case, it didn't. You get a little rosin core solder. And that's how you do it. You don't want a lot of solder. Um, the soldering iron on, on one side and the solder on the other. Kind of touching the circuit board as, and the wire. So, I'm just kind of melting that solder a little more so the wire comes through. And again, we solder. Now, a lot of you guys know how to do all this stuff, and I apologize, but some people have never done it. And if, you, if you've never done it, just take your time and practice a little bit. It's not beyond you, but it is something that uh, you get a touch, a touch for after a while. You're not born knowing how to solder. Okay, so you kind of feed things back through. At least I wasn't born knowing how to solder. So um, my earlier clocks would test to that. Which I probably already sold. Anyway, so here... Sorry if I sold you one of those. But uh, here we go. We're going to put that back. And again, this is where you get in a rush. You get all fancy. And you're going to break it. And you just want to take your time. We've got a perfect little light holder now. And again, uh, our real clock aficionado will appreciate that. And it's in place. Ready to roll. Okay, so what we got here is our uh, AM FM. Uh, selector and I'm gonna show you where to squirt this stuff. This is contact cleaner, electrical contact cleaner. You want one that says it's plastic safe. There's several brands. It's just electrical contact cleaner. It's uh, it's the secret sauce, man. It takes a radio that's not working or a uh, in this case here's the volume, a volume control that's staticky. Uh, it's called a potentiometer, by the way. That's in this case you want to squirt it right here. Some of them are different. They look different, but you want to get it down in there. And you're going to turn it back and forth and back and forth, all the way down, all the way up. Because you're cleaning out dust, garbage, gosh knows what, varnish, I don't know. And it just cleans it up real well. And it will be working. I'm telling you, this is generally all it needs. All right, and, you know, at this point, uh, I'll try to clean up some of my some of my mess. Uh, I, I don't, anymore, I don't go through and try to wipe down that whole circuit board. It's just not necessary. If you use alcohol, it's going to cause some of the wax that's on the board uh, to turn white. You don't need that. And plus, you could screw things up. It's just more opportunity to screw things up. Now, that's how the radio turns on. That selector there, it turns the radio on. It's a combination switch. It'll turn, it'll, it helps the clock alarm. So you want to just move that back and forth rapidly. Get everything working again. So we're switching here to AM, and here's the tuner. And so we'll tune in here. Just make sure that the uh, you can tune in the AM station, and uh, make sure that switch is making good contact. And we'll tune in here to an FM station. And volumes working, volume controls working. Um, any vibration, there's some vibration there, that's uh, just the, the uh, speaker vibrating on the table. And there's our selector, that, uh, again it controls the alarm, it alarms the buzzer, it alarms the radio, or it turns the radio on itself. There's our whirly gig, now check that, if you stop it with your finger, and then release and it starts right away, you don't need to screw with that motor, that motor's fine. It's just, that's, that's a good motor. And flipping just fine. I like to check on these clocks. It's kind of different. All clocks 
well, not all clocks, but they where they put the Japan symbol is different. Of course, if it's Singapore, but it's mostly Japan. Here's here it is at the eleven. So reassembly is just in reverse order. Just take your time, and here's the end result. Look at those knobs. Uh, if you don't appreciate that, go back and look what they look like before. It's a serious change. And that's it, the full restoration. When you get the time, come visit us at flipclockfans.com.